Among the many horror stories Stephen King has written, the one that has remained the longest in popular culture next to The Shining has to be It. It's a really long book that goes into great detail and certainly leaves you with the appropriate feeling of unease. Released in 1986, it's an unpleasant but iconic work that I doubt would be allowed to be published today. I've mixed feelings on the original source material, and I believe King himself has said he regrets having written certain parts of the 1138 page story. It was later made into a miniseries in 1990 with Tim Curry as the title character. This version has a great deal of nostalgia for a lot of people who watched it first. But take that away and the 1991 isn't exactly the nightmare fuel most people remember it as. Tim Curry's performance is a highlight and the young actors including one Seth Green and the late Jonathan Brandis are much better than you'd expect but everything else isn't as striking or dark as it deserved to be. It's an eh adaptation, not the worst but not the best. Despite the difficult start, 27 years later, funny that, there's a new take on the big screen starring Bill Skarsgård and directed by Andres Machete. Is it worth the price of admission? Well, let's see. Yeah, that was pretty good. Reviewing horror films are always going to be tricky. What scares one person might not affect the next moviegoer. Jordan Peele once talked about the similarities between the genres of horror and comedy. At the heart of both are attempts to provoke a response of fear or of laughter. My point is, it as a movie is completely open to people's taste. I see the majority of reactions to the film being positive, but that depends on whether you are a fan of it to begin with. Now this review will contain spoilers, so turn off now if you care for that thing. So the film begins the same way as the book. Obviously they've tweaked the story. It's no longer set in the 1950s, now it's 1989. We're focusing only on the losers as kids, among others. But the structure is the same. Bill Denver is sick, but his younger brother Georgie wants to go play. To keep him occupied, Bill makes a paper boat to use out in the rain. It all goes well until the SS Georgie rushes off into an open drain. Here It as the clown appears for the first time. It lulls the kid into a false sense of security before offering the boat back to Georgie. When he reaches for the boat, the true intentions of the clown reveal themselves and, on screen like the book, tears off his arm before pulling him into the cold dark sewers to be eaten. Title reveal. Watching this, I felt the CGI was very obvious, but it was still quite an effective introduction. Machete directs this scene with a lot of respect for the source material, though he is a fan of the book, so maybe that helped. And he gives you a good idea of what this it is trying to do. They might not be able to capture all the darkness present in the text by King, but they're going to give you a chilling experience as best they can. I'll nip this in the bud right away. Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise is as unsettling as everyone says. It would be unfair to contrast his performance with Curry's, so I leave that out. Bill's take is gloriously sinister. Incongruous with his Elizabethan inspired costume and a sparse colour scheme ties in better with the character's age. Bill's design also goes deeper into the uncanny valley, his staring blank eyes dribbling maw, awkward teeth, and ethereal, uncomfortable to listen to voice mean that just looking at him from a distance makes you want to get the fuck away from him. Skarsgård is also rather goofy, rather silly in the role, when the time comes. Though he is a clown, he's supposed to be. Thankfully, Pennywise is not the self-serious, dull cipher people feared he'd be, and it's a career-making performance for sure. I can't imagine anyone else doing a better job. Now, I'm well aware of the argument against his look. People say he's too obviously malevolent when compared to the book and miniseries, where its appearance was more real, more innocuous. That is a good point, but I'm with the director on this one. I understand that it is more striking when your antagonist does not appear notably evil, but at the same time, it's not very compelling in regards to look 
there's nothing really interesting you can do there. Feel free to agree or disagree with me, it's just my opinion. Anyways, one other sensible diversions from It the Book are the manifestations of the tile creature. King might be the only writer on the planet to make flying leeches not read terribly, but on screen I doubt it would have been effective. The Losers Club mostly fear ephemeral ones, monsters from monster movies, stuff you can easily get over. But this one has Pennywise traumatised the children with mental scars that can never go away. Georgie's death stays in Bill's mind and it uses that against him in a scene that was mocked in the teaser by many but is pretty scary in the film as Georgie decomposes while screaming you'll float too. The iconic line. Mike's memory of his parents burning to death is used against him and that scene is equally effective. Ben confronts a decapitated corpse in the library in another scary bit. Stan's haunted by a painting in a synagogue that homages Machete's previous film. Eddie sees the leper, which is in the book, in the standout scene, in my opinion, brought to life with practical effects and I suspect some CGI. Beverly sees the blood in the sink in an Evil Dead slash Nightmare on Elm Street-ish scene in execution, and Richie sees the clown who utters the famous beep beep from the book. The young actors playing the Losers Club are all exceptionally good. The film benefits also from the R rating or, as is rated here, 15A or 15A or 16. Richie's dialogue in particular in the film is perfect comic relief that's uncompromisingly juvenile. This may be a spoiler filled review but I'm not giving away Toja's best lines, they're priceless. But what about the bullies, Henry Bowers, Vic Chris, Belch and for the first time Patrick Hochstetter? Now let's be honest, they'd never be able to get away with some of the murky disturbing aspects of the book, particularly with Patrick Hockstetter's background, but that's just what happens when something's being adapted. I think you get a better idea of how much of a psycho Henry is in the film, on the clown's urging he murders his abusive father. And considering the shift in time, the racism he exhibits in the novel is non-existent, but he's still sadistic when he carves a hate into Ben's stomach. Patrick's role in it is greatly reduced, but he's still a shit like Bowers, and his death in the film, though drastically different, is a well-executed moment. The other bullies aren't that memorable. I liked that in the film, Pennywise's influence over the adults in Derry was hinted at with a TV show they watch earlier in the film that takes on a evil turn, as glimpsed in the trailers. The adults in it are just as big a group of arseholes in the book, but not as obvious this time round. Alvin Marsh is much creepier than he was before, as is the pharmacist, but Bill's dad giving out to him feels a lot more genuine than it was portrayed in the miniseries. But they're not they're not really a big contributing factor in it. That's probably for the best. Once more, what King can write really well might come across as a bit strange in how it how it works into a film. I've talked about visuals before with how it appears, but what I should also mention is that the film looks great. It's cinematography a uh, combination of old and new, and images featured here aren't going to leave you anytime soon. That strange upside down pyramid of balloons, the reveal of the dead children floating, the dilapidated house connected to the sewers, and the room full of clowns including a mannequin of Tim Curry's take on the creature. It's definitely one of the best visual adaptations of Stephen King's books. There's a reference to the turtle from the book, one aspect I didn't gel with when I read it first. And the reveal of the deadlights is nicely done, but fortunately the trippy cosmic Cthulhu horror part isn't a constant in chapter 1. They'll eventually use it in chapter 2, and hopefully I can follow it when they get around to that. 
it's rather satisfying that the losers defeat the creature by being the shit out of its vaguely human body if they'd started holding hands like they did in the mini series I don't think I'd have been able to take it just a bit too sappy for my liking I like my horror to be a bit nasty within reason of course but just if you're going to do something dark you might as well stick to that at the beginning of this review I mentioned that I have mixed opinions in regards to the book by Stephen King I want to clarify I don't think it is one of King's lesser works. He originally intended it to be his final ever horror story and that's probably why it's such a behemoth apart from King's over imagination. I think that Stephen King had the right idea with the book looking at that nowhere place between childhood ending and adulthood beginning figuratively and literally but it's not very subtle in areas either down to alcohol or whatever drugs he was taking back in the 1980s. The common criticism is valid and regardless of how King described its true form to human perception, isn't it still a disappointment and somewhat uncreative a climax when you have the remaining grown-up losers face off against a huge spider? 50s homage be damned. But the thing about it is that the story can work on the silver screen. It's a hodgepodge of different kinds of horror fiction and I was happy that they tried hard with what they could do with the kid losers. However, just because I enjoyed this film doesn't mean that I didn't have any faults. Most people comment that it isn't that scary and in some regards they're right. A few scenes I wasn't sure what to make of, do I laugh or do I get creeped out, but I don't know if I'm qualified to talk about that. I would say that if you have chorophobia then... You're definitely not going to like it whenever Pennywise shows up. And as decent as they were with this, it was never as unsettling as the source material. Those are the limits of adaptations. But I would certainly take this over Kari Fukunaga script, which, from what I've heard, isn't the kind of motion picture that audiences would want to watch again. Not even the sickest hardcore horror fans. Mike Hanlon also gets pushed into the background later on, which is a shame since he's going to be important in Chapter 2. Maybe it was intentional, like in Ghostbusters with Winston, I don't know. And this is my big beef here. Seeing that the film was set in the 80s, and there was a poster for Nightmare on Elm Street 5, and that it is co-distributed by New Line Cinema, it was such a missed opportunity for them not to have the creature take the form of Freddy Krueger at some point, in keeping with the spirit of the book. But, if it wasn't Robert Englund in some capacity, then I wouldn't have cared. I didn't get around to everything in it, but there'll probably be plenty of videos on the internet that'll tell you if you're desperate for more. I've heard people call it one of the best Stephen King movies based on his books. This is a strong statement when you consider the gold standard of all the ones that have preceded it. But I would say it's one of the better adaptations of his works. It is a loose take on the book, but a very decent one, and let's be honest, sometimes the best films that come from a written medium are the ones that take the greatest liberties. I'm going to be kind today. This film has had plenty of false starts and departures down to creative differences, yes, but it's still a watchable adaptation. I definitely take this over Thinner, Dreamcatcher, Cell and Maximum Overdrive, but so would most sane moviegoers. A nice surprise, faithful to how it was written, but understanding of how to make a movie. Who knows what future evaluation will bring, but for now I say it's an enjoyable horror film. Now I'm hoping they do chapter 2 better than the book in the miniseries. 9 out of 10.